<clears throat> There's a wonderful story in, uh, in one of the Upanishads, uh, the Brahma Vaivata Upanishad, of uh, Indra, <clears throat> this uh, god who is the counterpart really of Yahweh. He is the god uh, patron of a certain people and of historical life and time with all kinds of rules for people to live by and that sort of thing. And uh, there was a time when a great monster uh, named Vritra had uh, closed all the waters of the earth. And so there was a drought, a terrible drought, and uh, the world was in very bad condition. Well, it took this uh, god, Indra, quite a while to realize that he had a box of thunderbolts there, and all he had to do was drop a thunderbolt in Vritra, and that would blow him up. And when he did that, of course, he blew Vritra up, and the waters flowed, and the world was refreshed. And he said, what a great boy am I. So thinking, what a great boy am I, <clears throat> he goes up to the cosmic mountain, which is the central mountain of the world. And so he decided he would build a new world up there, a new city, and particularly his palace was going to be a palace worthy of such as he. So he calls Vishvakarman, the uh, main carpenter of the gods, and gives him the assignment to build this palace. So Vishvakarman goes to work, and in very quick order, he gets the palace into pretty good condition, and the, uh, Indra comes. But every time Indra arrived, he had bigger ideas about how big and grandiose the palace should be. And finally, Vishvakarman said, my gosh, he said, we're both immortal, and he ne there's no end to his desires. I'm caught for life. So he decided to go to Brahma, known as the creator, and, and complain. Well, now Brahma sits on a lotus. Uh, this is the symbol of divine energy and divine grace. And the lotus grows from the navel of Vishnu, who is the sleeping god whose dream is the universe. So here's Brahma on his lotus, and uh, Vishwakarma comes to the edge of the great lotus pond of the universe, and uh, down he tells his story. Brahma says, you go home. He says, I'll fix this up. So next morning, at the uh, gate of the palace that's being built, uh, there appears a beautiful blue-black boy uh, uh, with a lot of children around him just in admiration of his beauty. So in comes the boy. And Indra on his throne, he's the king god. He says, uh, young man, uh, Welcome, and uh, what brings you to my palace? Well, says the boy with a voice like thunder rolling on the horizon, I've been told that you're building such a palace as no Indra before you ever built. And he said, I've uh, surveyed the grounds and looked things over. It seems this is quite true. No Indra before you has ever built such a palace. Well, Indra says, uh, Indra's before me, young man. Uh, what are you talking about? The boy says, Indra's before you. He says, I have seen them come and go, come and go. He said, just think. Vishnu sleeps in the cosmic ocean. The lotus of a universe grows from his navel. On there sits Brahma, the creator, Brahma opens his eyes, a world comes into being. Governed by an Indra, closes his eyes, the world goes out of being. Opens his eyes, a world comes into being, closes his eyes, and the life of a Brahma is 432,000 years, and he dies. The lotus goes back, another lotus, another Brahma. And then think of the galaxies beyond galaxies in infinite space, each a lotus with the Brahma sitting on it, opening his eyes, closing his eyes with interest. There may be wise men in your court who would volunteer to count the drops of water in the oceans of the world or the grains of sand on the beaches, but no one would count those Brahmas, let alone those Indras. And while he's talking, there comes in parade across the floor of the palace an army of ants in perfect range. And the boy laughs when he sees them. And Indra's hair goes up and he thinks, he says to the boy, why do you laugh? And the boy says, don't ask unless you are willing to be hurt. And Indra says, I ask, teach. The boy says, former Indra's 
all. <laughs> Through many lifetimes they rise from the lowest condition spiritually to highest illumination. And then they drop their thunderbolt in Vritra and they think, what a good boy am I, and down they go again. And um, then Indra sits there on the throne and he th he's completely disillusioned, completely shot, and he thinks, oh, let's quit the building of this palace. He calls Vishwakarma and says, you're dismissed, you don't have to. So Vishwakarma got his uh, intention. He's dismissed from the job and there's no more house building going on. And uh, Indra decides, I'm going out and be a yogi and just meditate on the lotus feet of Vishnu. But he has a beautiful queen named Indrani. And when Indrani hears this, she goes to the priest, the uh, chaplain of the gods, and she says, now he's got this idea in his head. He's going out to become a yogi. Well, says uh, the Brahmin, uh, come in with me, darling, and we'll sit down and, and I'll fix this up. So he talks to Indra. They come in, they sit down before the king's throne, and he tells him, now, I wrote a book for you some years ago on the art of politics. Uh, you are in the position of the king. You are the position of the king of gods. You are manifestation of the mystery of Brahman in the field of time. This is a high privilege. Appreciate it, honor it, and deal with life as though you were what you really are. And with this set of instructions, Indra gives up his idea of going out becoming a, a yogi and finds that in life he can represent the eternal in the way of a, a symbol, you might say, of uh, the Brahman and uh, the, uh, the ultimate truth. So each of us is in a way the Indra of his own life. And uh, you can make a choice either to go out and in the forest and meditate and throw it all off or stay in the world and in the life either of your job, which is the kingly job of the politics and achievement, and as well in the love life with your wife and family, you are realizing the truth. Now, this is a, a very nice myth, it seems to me. Do we ever know the truth? Do we ever find it? Well, each person can have his own depth experience and, and some conviction of uh, being in touch with his own sat chit ananda his own being true consciousness and true bliss but the religious people tell us we really won't experience it till we go to heaven you know till you die i believe in having as much as you can of this experience while you're alive my bliss is now and i think in heaven you'll be having such a marvelous time looking at god that you won't get your own experience at all. That's not the place to have it. Here's the place to have the experience. Here and now. Here and now.